This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to be covering the difference between iterators and iterables. They sound almost exactly the same. So this causes a lot of confusion amongst the Python community, or at least that's the impression that I've been getting from reading all of your comments. So to start off this video, I'm going to import a few types from the typing module. And the first one is going to be the iterable type, then the iterator type and the generator type. And to start this off, we're going to create our very first iterator. So we're going to create some people of list of type string, which are going to be the following people, Bob, James, and Luigi. And to turn this into an iterator, we just need to use the built-in iter function. So down here, we can type in people iter, which will be of type iterator of type string is going to equal the iter function with the people inside. And this is going to turn our list into an iterator. But what is an iterator? Well, iterators are just objects. And to be more specific, iterators are objects that implement the iter dunder method. And one thing that's important to note about iterators is that they keep track of their state when you use next, which is another dunder method that you can define in your user defined classes. So what does all of that mean? Well, if you were to print, let's say the next person in our people iterator, you would get Bob back. That is the first element from our iterator. If we were to do that two more times, we would get each person back one at a time. And this keeps track of where we are in the current iterator. So, I mean, on the first call of next, we're getting back Bob, which means Bob is now left behind because we already iterated through Bob. So the next time we call next, we're going to get James. So it's never going to restart from the beginning. And what's important to note is that iterators are exhaustive, just like with generators. And I'll explain why in just a moment. But here, if we were to type in the list of our people iterator, we're going to get an empty list back because we already exhausted all of the elements within. If we were to remove these two calls, we would get two people left. But as soon as we call list on that again, it's going to be empty because as soon as you grab the information from an iterator, it disappears from that iterator. And this is incredibly memory efficient because we're not loading all of the data immediately. We're only grabbing the pieces that we want at the time that we need it. So you might have a program that kind of grabs that data in bunches. For example, you might want to only grab two names at a time. So you can type in for I in range two, print next of the people or the people iterator. And when you do this, it's going to grab two people. And immediately under, if you wanted to grab more information, you can do that. You can just copy and paste this under, and it's going to continue grabbing those people. But it's going to pick up where it left off. And because we only have three people, we're going to encounter the stop iteration error because we made it to the end of the iterator. Anyway, earlier I stated that iterators are exhaustive just like generators. And this is no coincidence because every generator is actually an iterator. And to keep it short and simple, generators are just a simple and powerful tool for creating iterators. This is something you're going to have to research on your own, how to create your own custom iterators. But once you do a bit of research, you'll see that a generator is just a much more simple implementation for creating an iterator. Anyway, next I'm going to create this generator, which is called generate range. It takes n as an integer and it returns to us a generator that only yields integer values. Now, if this type annotation scares you, don't worry, I have a video on generators, which you can find in the description box down below. It will explain exactly what this means. But all you need to know right now is that this generator yields an integer. And then I'm using that sugar syntax that yields from our range. Anyway, this is going to create a generator that just generates the amount of numbers that we specify for this range. And originally, if we were to create this generator, we would use the generator type annotation with its signature. And that would equal generate range with the amount of numbers we want to generate. So here we'll add n equals three. And this would be the proper way to annotate this generator. But just as I mentioned earlier, all generators are iterators. So we also have the option to define this to be an iterator of type integer. 
and that type annotation will work perfectly fine. The police have found me. They knew I was making tutorials. I'm going to have to change locations. And then if we want to use it, it works exactly the same way. We call next on the generator, which is actually an iterator, and it will give us back the content, but only upon request. So now that we have an idea on what iterators and generators actually are, it's time to talk about iterable. And to explain it, I'm going to create a function called say hello. And it's going to take some names of type iterable, which will contain strings. And this function will return none. Then for name in names, we're going to print the F string of hello name. And that's going to be our function. And iterables are actually super simple. They are just a type which can be used to create an iterator, which means that if you have a list or a tuple or a set, as long as you can turn that into an iterator, it's going to be considered iterable. So for example, if we have some, let's say, I'm just going to call this n to keep it short, one, two, three. If we have this and we want to make an iterator, that will be perfectly fine. You can type in iter, pass in n, and n will be considered iterable because you can turn it into an iterator. Now, something you can't turn into an iterator is the none type. So this is not iterable. Or another thing we can't turn into an iterator is a whole number. This is not iterable. So that's the first way to recognize whether something is iterable. The second way, which is probably the easiest rule of thumb, is that if you can loop through it, it's an iterable. It's something that you can iterate through. That's what makes it iterable. So here in this function, we're saying that as long as you can loop through it and as long as the content is of type string, then that type will be accepted because we don't want to limit this to a list. What if the user wants to pass in a tuple? Well, I mean, obviously you can add a union type and you can say tuple and you can do the ugly annotation for string of any length. And that's perfectly fine. But now what if you want to add a set or some fourth data type? Well, creating that huge union type is just a big pain in the butt. And that's why we are using iterable here because iterable covers everything that we can iterate through. For example, if we want to say hello to Bob, James, and Luigi, we can do that using a list and it's going to work perfectly fine. But maybe someone else is going to choose to do it using a tuple, but that will also work perfectly fine because it is iterable. And even if it's a set, there's going to be no issue here because it is iterable. It is something that we can loop through. And that's pretty much all it means to have something of type iterable. Anyway, I hope this helped you a bit better to understand the difference between an iterator and an iterable. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any further confusions or have any information to add regarding this topic. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.